Uh, one of the important messages that I wanted to convey with this pavilion was to integrate art and architecture and science uh, so it would become greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, I've been working with some amazing architects, BDP, the structure engineers, Tristan Simmons, and what I wanted to do was create uh, an immersive experience. So rather than having a piece of sculpture or a piece of architecture in a landscape, the whole thing was integrated. That was really important to me. What I wanted to achieve was to, uh, was to create a journey because I believe that one can convey uh, messages uh, through experience and through feelings rather being then lectured at. So I was keen that one would sort of start in the pavilion and at the end of the journey one would feel something different. So yeah, the, the most important thing about the architecture was the integration. I also wanted the whole experience to be quite quiet and quite calm. There's a lot of pavilions there which are quite bold, quite striking. And what I wanted my pavilion to be was perhaps the antithesis to this. Uh, there are a lot of inherent challenges and contradictions and ironies, I think, with the expo itself. That It only lasts for six months. There's so much energy gets expended on this, uh, so much time, so much effort, so much money. And with the actual theme itself of feeding the planet, a very laudable theme, but it's how, as a, how, how an artist, how one can uh, feel comfortable with working with this. So I wanted my pavilion to be quiet, to be as sustainable as possible. So the materials that I used, we chose to use, uh, they haven't been processed. The aluminium is raw, uh, the steel, corten, naturally patinates. 80% of the pavilion is planting or trees, which all can all be recycled or, re or reused. Uh, the hive itself, which is the centerpiece, I suppose, of, of the pavilion at the, at the end of the journey, is going to be relocated back in the UK. So it was really important to me that the pavilion would have an impact. It, it would say a lot, but also it could, be, it could be reused. It would have a legacy for the future. It wouldn't just remain within the six months and then disappear like a ghost. What I wanted to do was, was use a, a symbol as a metaphor of something which is very simple, which a child could understand as well as a, as a, as a professor. And there's a well-documented decline of the honeybee, and the honeybee is essential to the pollination of our food and the planet. And I wanted to highlight the plight of the honeybee. Uh, the honeybee can be sort of seen uh, as a sentinel for the earth, almost as a, as a barometer for the health of the earth. And I wanted to e express this, if, if people could kind of feel and realize that the problems that the honeybee is, is, is facing, that maybe a percentage of the people who would see the pavilion, who would experience the pavilion, might think slightly different, might change their ways of behaviour, there might be a slight shift of consciousness. So it's a small little pebble which I've kind of thrown in the pool and hopefully those ripples will emanate outwards. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a simple message, but to try and do that cohesively is always, is always the most difficult thing to do. And to try and do everything, we were commissioned just under a year to do uh, the pavilion. And it's been an amazing experience, but it's been incredibly ch and challenging, just in terms of the program, in terms of the budget. Uh, and we're now three weeks away from opening. And, it's, and it feels great, it's looking good, but it's, uh, there's still a lot to do. But it's, it's really exciting, and, and I'm really pleased with the whole of the team. This couldn't have happened without this really fantastic integration, I think, between science, architecture, and art, landscape, food. Uh, and I think everyone has kind of understood the vision. And I think because of that, it's kind of come together. And it, it's been an amazing experience. Uh, at the moment, I'm so wrapped in it. I'm so in the middle of it. It's very difficult to, to step outside and, 
uh, and be objective. But uh, I think it's going to be good. The most difficult construction challenge that, that we faced on the whole build, th th there was two, really. Uh, th the biggest one was time. Uh, to have enough time to, uh, to think and to dream about the piece, to dream about the concept, then to design it to make sure that it could work. Uh, and then the second most difficult challenge was, was probably the construction of the hive. It's a, it's a really large uh, piece. We want it to be as delicate and as light and as, as ethereal as possible. So a lot of time and effort with some amazing engineering went into, into the process. Uh, and this was allied with some fantastic fabrication through a company called Stage One. Uh, there's over 170,000 parts uh, in the hive itself, each one of them individually numbered and processed. Uh, so it's like a giant Lego Meccano kit. So everything had to be kind of prefabricated back in the UK and brought to site in sequence. It's a very tall, it's a very long, thin, narrow sort of site, not a great deal of space to work on. So logistically, to try and get everything there in sequence to make sure that everything fitted, that was, that was, that was the biggest challenge. But again, I think if you have good people around you and we know that we can do it, it's, it, it's, been, it's been fine. And then the other thing is what we wanted to do was uh, to almost take this slice of the, the UK countryside and bring it over, over into Milan to create this wildflower meadow. And, and again, what we wanted to do is, is to have this meadow in full flourish at the beginning of May. So we had to work with, again, some amazing landscape architects to make sure this happens. So when it actually opens on the beginning of May, there are flowers, there are grasses. Uh, and, and again, we've worked some amazing nurseries over here uh, in Milan uh, to help achieve that. And it's, the, the trees are now in blossom, the flowers are just about to come in bloom, and uh, yeah, it's looking very pretty.